there is a new Blu-ray label on the market. And for me, they are doing some of the most interesting things in film distribution and physical media. And I'm talking about Radiance Films. So Radiance Films was announced to the public in 2022. It's spearheaded by Fran Simeone, from our, who used to work for Arrow Films, and he oversaw a lot of the Arrow video and Arrow Academy titles. And for me, they've just absolutely been smashing it with their releases so far. And gonna cover the ones that I have and share my thoughts on the, the actual discs and the films, and just give you a reason why I will be subscribing for their second half slate for 2023 from the, the June to December package. So their first bunch of releases uh, included <coughs> Elio Petri's The Working Class Goes to Heaven, sorry about the glare there, and also uh, Kazuka Yamashita, uh, the big time gambling boss. Both of these films are absolutely incredible. This is very much a uh, film about class, um, class warfare really, um, capitalism, um, just labor and just generally how you know workers are exploited and it's a, a masterful film an exceptional lead performance by Gian Maria Volante here La vita, traguardo, striscione, tutti dentro in pista just wonderful and yeah this this is such a great film so what separates um the radiance from other UK labels is that they have quite cleverly added what's called an OBI strip, which is something that is generally found in a lot of Japanese releases, particularly on like vinyl records and things like that. So it's like something that gives you information about the film. So this is normally kept like on here like this, and then you can take it out and it gives you all the information about the film, the runtime, the special features, and it has that pesky ratings label, which by law in the UK, you have to have on your physical media releases but because it's removable, you can now have a mark-free artwork on the disc and on the packaging, and it's absolutely wonderful. And you can keep this, I'm sure a lot of people will, and they'll just slot it in to the case. So as a keepsake, and they can look at all the special features without having, you know, having a, one of those pesky like J cards that some a lot of Reese's come, which are a bit more sturdier and a bit more difficult to put in, in cases. But anyway, I digress. So. Elio Petri's The Working Class Goes to Heaven is my favourite film of that I've discovered this year so far. Absolutely wonderful and a great way to start. It's a spine number one. I don't know if you can pick that up, but um, so good. But then the second release <laughs> that Radiance put out is spine number 12, Big Time Gambling Boss by uh, Kazaku Yamashita. This was a wonderful surprise for me. Um, I've watched some Japanese crime dramas. I've seen Battles Without Honor and Humanity um, and some other Yakuza titles uh, from Kinji Fukusaku. But this is something new to me because it really intertwines a lot of melodrama into the narrative here. So it's a lot of high emotion and yeah and it perfectly works and i was really pleasantly surprised this came out in 1968 and the the film looks absolutely perfect some great special features on here as well um a guy called mark Schilling, uh who is an author of a yakuza book um discusses the the history and the impact of um yakuza genre in general and that's absolutely wonderful and yeah i love i've reversed it so it's got the original poster art on this one so i should also mention that all these releases have reversible art similar to like a lot of arrow discs do and various other labels like vinegar syndrome um so for this one i kept the new commissioned art and i wanted to go for the og art for this one because i just really love the style on that one so yeah the first two releases were spine number one and 12 very reminiscent of indicators um, sort of release schedule where the spine numbers aren't all put out in order. I don't know why that is. I'm sure it's something to do with when they secure the rights or when they're putting stuff together. Some things get ready before others, so they release it earlier. I'm not sure, but anyway, spine one and 12 releases one and two and absolutely amazing and worth your time. And yeah. And then second, second batch of titles that were released, uh, we have a film called uh a woman kills or the french title is la femme bureau 
uh, butchered that probably. This is fantastic. This was a lost film for a long time. No one would um, pick it up for distribution because it was so controversial. Uh, set during, well, it's recorded or filmed during the um, the unrest in, in France in 1968, uh, when there was lots of riots and um, yeah, civil unrest and stuff, and um, has a lot of interesting things to say about uh, gender roles. And yeah, it follows a serial killer, basically. And for the time, very, very sort of taboo subject matter and... Yeah, it's fantastic that this has finally been picked up like 40 years plus later and been given the treatment it deserves. And again, wonderful release. This has been a fantastic audio commentary by one and only Kat Ellinger. Um, you know, you're on to something great when she puts a commentary on something. And yeah, so this was Spine number eight. So as you see, there's a theme of not releasing things in order. So we have Spine 1, 12 and 8. And then... The, la the other thing I have is um, Miami Blues, um, which is spine number five. So this, uh, the other films that were on this list, I hadn't really, didn't really know anything about. Um, I knew of um, The Working Class Goes to Heaven, but I don't even think that had an English friendly physical media release uh, until this one. Um, but Miami Blues has had releases uh, from different parts of the world, um, but the package that Radiance have put together here is fantastic and I hadn't seen the film before either and this is quite a fun dark comedy crime drama thing um, starring Alec Baldwin, Jennifer Jason Lee, and uh, Fred Ward and there's just basically tells the story of a criminal who's just been released from prison and basically doesn't really know how to assimilate back into society so the first thing you do when he lands in Miami is to go on a crime spree and start to build what he thinks is some semblance of a normal life but things spiral and it's a wonderful darkly funny in my opinion uh crime thriller caper thing i don't really know how to describe this very well but yeah really really good as a again this one has uh, these all have booklets so i should have mentioned that as well but they all have the obi strips which are normally on the side here and given all the information so now we have a nice artwork package with zero ratings markings on it which is so so good uh the people at radiance know or probably are film collectors so they know or listen to the film collector you know people that buy these discs and, and realize i really don't want horrible things that ruin the artwork on my discs and they come up with a really simple and elegant solution to that and yeah so miami blues wonderful 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 so how i would describe radiance is they are basically a very they take the best bits of what criterion do and another uk label indicator films from powerhouse they are doing taking the best bits of both of those companies and for me that's why i think they're doing some of the most exciting things and with their potential with their upcoming slate and they've got a box set of Franco Nero films coming out, which I can't wait to get. Um, they've teased a few titles that aren't on their website, but in some magazines they have um, some potential or some titles that will be coming out in the future. And um, on their social media channels, they're always talking about when they've been to film festivals and not telling us exactly what they've picked up, but they'll say we've picked up the rights from a film from this country and things like that. So they're always engaging with the community and um, I really appreciate that and yeah, so I didn't want to jump on the, I couldn't afford it because it's so expensive, but worth it at the same time. But I didn't want to just jump on and buy like a year subscription to this company um, without sort of tasting what they had to offer first. I'm very, very impressed. And it's going to be these discs when they do arrive at my house, they're going to be prioritized as things to watch. So I can sort of keep up with this company, you know, up to date as they, as and when they do. Now this isn't to say that every single time I pick up, I'm gonna pick up everything, but if I don't like a film, I'm really not feeling it. I'm not gonna keep it just for the sake of having a complete collection of this company. Um, I have a very limited space as it is, and you know, discs can, I can recoup money on discs when I, if I sell them on the secondary market, but 
as I am feeling about the company right now, I really am interested in picking up everything and then seeing what they have to offer and then deciding from there whether I want to keep the discs or not. But so far, four out of four, these will be rewatched. Um, and yeah, let's let's see what Radiance has to offer in the future and I can't wait. Let me know if you have picked up any of the Radiance Films discs. Um, I know some people in the US who have ordered these that so it's taken it's because of uh, Royal Mail issues shipping internationally. Some people still haven't got these discs yet and the, especially the first run of uh, discs have been out since the beginning of January now. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've got these, what you thought of them. Are you a subscriber? Are you one of the really fortunate people to have picked up the three year mammoth subscription? So you're gonna get everything that this company releases for the next three years. Um, uh, what are your plans on picking any of these up? Let me know. Until next time, everyone, take care.